Hello and welcome to our session, Accelerating Japanese Economic Dynamism to Combat COVID-19. I am your moderator, Tomohiko Taniguchi, my first name and surname, and I call our members of the panel all in that order later on. I am Professor, Keio University Graduate School of System Design and Management. I also spent, until September this year, almost eight years at the Prime Minister's office as Prime Minister Shinzo Abe's uh, primary foreign policy speechwriter. I am very much pleased to be moderating the session for two reasons. First, the panel has five distinguished members who each embodies Japan 2.0, great renovation that is daily taking place in the country. Second, I am as curious as you all are about what they have to say on the challenges Japan is faced with amidst the pandemic and how they think the country should seek triple B, that is, building its economy back better. Without uh, further ado, let me first introduce Gen Goto. Uh, he is a serial entrepreneur uh, currently running a company named Kotozna that has an office also in Estonia, selling an application with which you can speak in whatever language with anyone. He is a graduate of Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy, by the way. Mr. Goto, um, uh, uh, so, sorry, the uh, second uh, speaker, uh, let me introduce uh, Ted Katagi, Mr. Katagi there, who founded a company called uh, Kenja, which I suppose means either wise person or a person with hmm. deep eyesight, or perhaps both. The 10-year-old company is providing customers with cloud-based means for content sharing and cooperative works. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, he was previously with Bain and Company, Vodafone Japan, among others, and now marketing a technology solution that um, obviously um, uh, fits into a new normal. Uh, next, uh, Mr. Noritaka Kobayashi. He is founder and CEO of a company called Baji, B-A-W-J-I, which is for him the fourth startup he has created as a serial entrepreneur. It runs an SNS uh, platform where you could say how you are doing uh, uh, and care about what others are doing. The company is based near Asakusa, uh, a tourist destination. Next, uh, Shin Nagao is a partner with uh, White Star Capital, a fund that provides early stage startups with capital. Born and raised in Europe, now stationed in Japan, he told me that he would like to speak on work-life balance. Last, but not, uh, not at all least, we have uh, hmm. Toshihiro Toyoshima. Uh, he is a founder and CEO of Mercuria Investment, based in Tokyo. Originally from a state-run financial institution, Development Bank of Japan, he has led his investment firm to develop expertise in cross-border and or growth uh, funding. The task ahead of us, uh, uh, gentlemen, is to think about how Japan should uh, get out of its uh, tunnel uh, and build back its economy better. And I see that uh, uh, Feel You, that's the uh, name of the platform that you are running uh, under, the, under the company Baji. And uh, it seems that uh, that's very much fit to enhance people-to-people -people connections in this age when uh, people couldn't uh, hardly get out and meet in person. What would you say? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I created this app to, to build a loneliness among the, especially millennium generations, because we cannot go out and to have a meeting or go drinking and everybody feel loneliness and anxiety. So, I think uh, it, it might be possible to provide a relief by instant app. So I decided to develop and release it this year after COVID-19. All right. The challenges include the difficulty with which um, you could um, not speak uh, in person with others. And uh, what kind of solution can we provide to um, cope with that difficulty? Anyone? Yes. 
Please. Yeah. Uh, I'm Teishima from uh, Mercury Investment. Uh, we do uh, have various types of investment, and some of them are in uh, in tech companies. Uh, especially after uh, COVID-19, we have seen the social SNS uh, type of platform uh, growing very rapidly. And also one of our investees, uh, LifeNet, uh, had attracted uh, double, uh, ha- ha- had doubled its customer uh, for the application of new insurance uh, uh, in a month, uh, in, especially in, in April. So uh, definitely uh, COVID-19 is having a different type of impact on different types of industry, and especially those who support the communication over the internet uh, is uh, gaining from that. Right. Uh, let me ask uh, further, Mr. Goto, then, what would you like to say about the task in Japan building back better? The solution you are marketing, Kotozna, yeah. is best used between individuals meeting in person, isn't it? Because it uh, makes it very much easy for anyone speaking any language to speak with anyone speaking with yes. any language. But my question is the pandemic incentivizes people to stay inside to meet more online, <coughs> where is where is still hope for your company and for the country? You have um, three minutes. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah, the yeah we are highly imp- impacted because um, our industry is tourism industry. So the uh, rapid increase uh, decrease of the inbound travelers impacted us badly uh, in early April. But uh, after all, um, our company went very uh, is uh, doing very well now because um, our focus is, as Teresa Masan say, yeah, our our, in, um, our business is internet, and um, our business is touchless. Yeah, we um, and um, our focus is a hospitality industry, and um, our solution is that uh, to facilitate the communication between guest room and staffs. And the um, uh, for the not only inbound travelers but uh, domestic travelers, the contactless communication is uh, very uh, needed, and especially our partner is JTB, and uh, mm-hmm. JTB um, sells our product, um, our service um, very much in this tough situation because our solution is one of the very few services uh, JTB uh, handles now. Uh, excuse me, what uh, does JTB stand for? Uh, uh, Japan Tourism Bureau. All right. Yeah. Okay, we've been talking about the possibilities with which uh, we could we could better cope with the pandemic using uh, internet technology, which uh, brings me back to the buzzword of the day, that is DX, uh, dig- digital transformation. Mm-hmm. Everyone, everyone's now yes. talking about DX. <laughs> and seen from a macro perspective, it is imperative for Japan to enhance productivity, uh, perhaps a total factor productivity, uh, precisely speaking. And I would like uh, to invite any one of you to uh, tell us uh, what the solution would be for Japan, seen from a macro perspective, to improve and enhance its uh, productivity by utilizing DX. Yeah, I'll, I'll take that. Oh. Yes, go, go on. Ahead. Oh, okay. Um, so I'll take a cut at it. Digital transformation, I think, is uh, is really hampered in Japan um, short term by by resistance to processes and to new things. Right. Uh, there's a lot of people who uh, who say that they don't want to try the latest thing. Um, Seventy percent was the goal for work at home for the government. Um, and the latest statistics says that uh, about 31 percent actually have implemented it. Forty two percent never implemented it. And 27% said, more scarily, they, they have implemented but now are not doing it. So they tried it, and they said, no, that's not for me. We're not going to do it. Um, so um, in this day of, of saying digital transformation, the key is change. Um, and one of the things that um, I thought a lot about is what is hampering Japan in change? Um, and, and you have to think through this. Um, is Japan actually changed a lot more than any other country in the world? Right after the Meiji era, right after the war, um, they really changed quite rapidly. Um, yet, yet, day-to-day change seems so hard, right? And so um, if we really want to think about that, then we have to think about 
Japanese culture, which everybody in Japan says, okay, that's natural. I understand it. But the joshiki, the common knowledge, is not common. Is mm-hmm. People will all say it's a little bit different. So what, what is Japan? Japan's uh, cultural roots would say it's, it's about a farming community, noko minzoku. It's about being, um, being more perfectionistic, like kanpeki, uh, being more respectful, and mm-hmm. also um, uh, respecting the harmony, right? So those four things actually – are great for doing uh, great things in manufacturing. Uh, and those four things are also great for processes, mm-hmm. right? They're all very process-oriented. So Japan succeeds really well when there's a process. So um, the thing is, is I always hear people say, ah, Japan, why don't they be more like Silicon Valley? More entrepreneurial, right? That's <laughs> not Japan. That's not Japan. If you want to do that, go to Silicon Valley. You have a different right. cultural set of rules and ask them to do a manufacturing thing to perfect standards. They're not going to do it. Okay. All, all right. Uh, Mr. Well, Nagao. Just, you, but the, the final thing is process. <laughs> so I'm saying process to change its process and gaiatsu. That's the final thing is that in those other periods, it was gaiatsu that did it. And the gaiatsu for COVID is COVID. So that's okay. that. Gaiatsu means uh, pref- pressure from outside. And uh, from Ted, outside. Uh, mm. Ted you're, you're saying the COVID pandemic is another is. great source of Gaiatsu and the yeah. external so pressure, right? Let's take advantage of that and change. That's are that. talking about change. And while you're talking, uh, it was uh, Mr. Nagao who was nodding. And so you've uh, got your intervention, please. <laughs> so I, I, I agree with Ted. Uh, I think COVID is uh, kind of a trigger, uh, but it, probably wouldn't automatically bring about positive change. So it's it's really what we do mm-hmm. with it. And um, going back to Kobayashi-san's platform, uh, which is around you know building communication uh, tools for the millennials, uh, I think with the work from home uh, kind of environment, uh, and this is an anecdote that I heard from uh, one of the senior partners of a well ma- well-known management uh, consulting company here in uh, Japan, um, and uh, the, the senior partner actually spends at least a few hours a day uh, speaking with his or her team members um, because uh, to to check in with their uh, kind of mental and morale status. And because the uh, consulting firm is so used to uh, being working uh, physically close to each other that they're really not used to coping with this uh, remote work environment. Mm. And just from a productivity point of view, it's not really realistic for a senior partner to spend so much time on a non uh, kind of productive work. Their uh, probably mandate is to be in front of clients mm. uh, and delivering results. So uh, what I guess I'm trying to say is that one of the um, probably business chances uh, and I believe, uh, I hope from a venture capital point of view that we'll see more entrepreneurs tackling this uh, segment is to see Japan uh, kind of creating um, early unicorns in the kind of health, uh, probably mental health field, um, mm. probably more in the B2B field, which is um, for, in my opinion, largely uh, kind of ignored up until now, uh, and then mm. to kind of export it to uh, neighbors, uh, and then to really uh, kind of boost um, uh, not only the productivity, but also uh, deliver solutions to, to society. Uh, so that's that's kind of my my take. Fostering mm. unicorns and uh, embracing change and uh, embracing the culture uh, to uh, uh, ignite changes. I think they're all uh, something that, uh, that's that been long talked about and uh, very few people actually walked the talk. How can you change? Really, how can you really introduce change? Any, any thoughts oh, yeah. and uh, interventions? Yeah. Can I go ahead, please. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, uh, there's one thing I want to point out. Uh, well, the point about the B2B innovation is so important. Uh, because in Japan, there are so many detailed regulations in various sectors, uh, not to mention agricultural, construction, real estate, transportation, travel, everything uh, is so much highly regulated. So it allows inefficient industry to survive. Uh, for example, the real estate brokerage companies, there are more than 300,000. Uh, for transportation companies, uh, more than 60,000. And uh, these are all licensed 
enterprises and uh, come under the franchise of certain giants. Uh, in Japanese, we call it Keiretsu. So they are uh, encircled uh, with certain Keiretsu and uh, which prevent the penetration of new DX to enhance the efficiency of such industry uh, across uh, the com companies. Uh, I, I think that is a very serious issue. Well, in, in, in Silicon Valley, everybody is trying to fight against existing regulation. Uh, Airbnb, Uber, everything is uh, initially has a lot of discussion and fighting against the government <coughs> to introduce new services. We do not see such innovative uh, attitude against the government in Japan right now. But if you uh, narrow the problem down to the inherent culture, uh, that uh, is tantamount to be saying that it's not mm. uh, gonna gonna change. Well, uh, we, well, have, uh, to, we right. have to be very much creative and see in seeking uh, leverage point. Uh, exactly. And, uh, so the sen sense of crisis is needed. The sense of crisis is urgently needed, but the uh, relaxation and, and, and too much generous uh, financing is supporting everything not to change. I see. The uh, extremely easy money monetary policy uh, prohibits uh, Japanese entrepreneurs and industrialists from feeling the sense of urgency. Is that uh, what you're saying, Mr. Toyoshima? Uh, uh, exactly. And, right. and the point is government that is, uh, well over, uh, manageable level. Okay. In this context, we're talking about the changes and the difficulty therein. Uh, uh, anyone else, uh, with, uh, any idea? Hi. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, Goto -san. yeah, uh, regard the regulation. Uh, my previous uh, startup was Kenko.com. That was uh, that is the largest online drugstore in Japan, and um, our business was banned um, to sell uh, pre uh, sell uh, OTC drugs online because of the regulation. And uh, we sued the government for ten years, and uh, finally we won at the Supreme Court. So it it took ten years uh, <laughs> to do so, but now the COVID nineteen. Uh, makes it much easier because uh, now uh, the uh, online uh, diagnosis is uh, par partially uh, approved, and uh, this kind of uh, yeah, the COVID nineteen is um, <coughs> makes a very small uh, window to change the regulation now. Medical uh, business is the business where you can find uh, vested interests in Japan and perhaps elsewhere. And Mr. Goto, you said that you, it took 10 years for you to win over a case that uh, you made vis-a-vis uh, -vis the Japanese Ministry of uh, Health. And uh, your experiences uh, tell uh, that uh, you could change or uh, it should be better for you to uh, give up uh, spending so much time. You must be very much cautious and uh, patient. Uh, we have uh, a dozen or so visitors and viewers <coughs> abroad, and so they should be aware what to be done in Japan to uh, bring about real changes that uh, would involve regulations imposed by the government. Any further ideas from Goto, Mr. Goto? Yeah, uh, the, yeah, yeah, best interest group um, is very strong yeah, because the, they they have um, iron triangles with uh, bureaucrats and po uh, politicians, but now the uh, uh, yeah government is changing to uh, yeah the uh, Ministry of Health is still um, uh, reluctant to uh, their regulation, but uh, many other ministries uh, tend to. Uh, change the regulation to uh for for digital transformation these days we are basically looking at a glass uh, half full or half empty uh how many of you are in the school of um half full or how many of you are in the school of half empty or in other words uh give us your positive view and negative view, negative view about the possibility with which Japan could change and come out of its uh, uh, pandemic, come out of it, come out of this pandemic uh, better. 
So if, if I may, um, yes. building, building on uh, Goto-san's point, so I, I am more of an optimist, uh, and I, I think being a venture capitalist, I, I, I have to be. You have but, to be, yes. Yeah, compared to 10 years ago when Goto-san was trying to uh, move the government, I think at least with what uh, the, the current administration is doing with the digital agency and trying mm-hmm. to, obviously it's a struggle trying to um, consolidate uh, budgeting power and we'll have to see whether they're successful. But at least uh, at the national level, there's some movement uh, and uh, there's willingness. Uh, and then more on a local level, um, I'm pretty hopeful because in the last five or six years, there's been um, more and more uh, kind of local government leaders who are asking for sandboxes where anything from e-scooters or OTC drugs, um, uh, you know, some of the uh, kind of highly uh, sensitive regulated uh, areas at the national level could be basically experimented at the local level uh, and with civic participation. So we're seeing those at the local level as well. Uh, And then more at the micro level, I think just speaking to uh, some of my colleagues from universities, uh, those that used to go to blue chip companies are now leaving uh, those jobs to actually join startups as CXOs. And so uh, I assume that that is kind of a, more of an acceptance of a startup career path at the individual level. So um, those kind of point to me as uh, as a general direction, it's moving uh, better. Uh, it might not be at the speed of what we see in Silicon mm-hmm. Valley of Israel, but at least I think compared to, you know, one or two decades ago, I think that's a, that's a huge step forward. Before hearing uh, negative um, con ideas, uh, can I just invite uh, any one of you to further the points just uh, made by Shun Nagao? Yeah, I, I would agree with Shun as well that there is a, a, a positive side is that there, um, one of the things that you'll, you'll talk to corporate executives and they'll say, actually, we are looking at the young people to uh, revitalize Japan. So they're, they're seeing that as a, as a good positive sign too. Um, just to go back to the process point, because I think this is really important still, um, is that mm. process right now, what is the process for do- going online, going digital? There is really no process that's agreed on. There's big consulting firms that want to sell you $10 million projects. <laughs> they don't, there's no, like the, the yadikata, the way of doing things, it's not really defined. So um, I think that um, like uh, what Noritaka is doing with uh, Phil Yu, that's one, one part of the component of, of the process for working from home, right? You got you to gotta understand the feeling of people. You have to think through all the different things on process. If Japan can really map that out, I think um, the process of telework, if it really is mm-hmm. changed, I think this is really part of the foundation for truly going DX and, and getting efficient. Yeah, I, I agree with that. The process is very important. Actually, I also see the positive impact due to the COVID-19, but to accelerate it, we do need a digital, digital transformation, as we all understand. But to accelerate the digital transformation, we have to take care about not too much localization of the Japanese business style. Because of we don't mm-hmm. our digital transformation is not good is because we have too much localization style in Japan. Mm. Due to the COVID nineteen, now we some company t- try to give up the old Japanese style and they try to apply the new global standard style so that they can install DX uh, apps easier. So the point is we have to before to discuss the DX. We have to change our local style, local business flow to the global style in much easier, easier way to shortcut way to be a more D- DX uh, country. The report card seems to be mixed. Uh, we have seen some changes, positive changes taking place. And uh, let me just uh, ask uh, any one of you to uh, tell us uh, something else. And that something else is uh, something that could... Uh, enhance Japanese productivity. Tell us what more to be done. 
Uh, we have not uh, spoken anything about uh -huh. uh, women, for instance. This is an all-male panel. No <laughs> women. Right? Uh, anything uh, else? Um, uh, well, I, I just want to add one more, one, one, sure. one more point. Uh, it's, it's cultural, but the uh, personal information protection in Japan is too extreme in a way, and mm. uh, which is really uh, uh, obstructing the digital tra uh, utilization of the digital technologies in various fields. Uh, I, I think, yeah, including e-government. Uh, can I can I ask you to elaborate a little bit more, Mr. Toyoshima, about the personal information protection? How uh, strict um, uh, it is? Yes, uh, like in healthcare, the 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 uh, information regarding the patients cannot be shared across the hospitals. Uh, even though uh, it incurs a great amount of uh, support from the government health insurance uh, program, but uh, the data is not open up to everybody. Uh, tax, uh, tax, uh, tax ID identification number uh, cannot be shared, or the uh, utilization of personal data for other purposes is extremely uh, limited, and, and also leakage of whatever personal information. Uh, for example, if I, 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 I put a wrong email address in my business communication, I have to report it to the uh, FS, uh, uh, yeah, FSA. So, so uh, it's quite extreme, yes. I see. That's just reminded me, Mr. Toyoshima, of the amount of money that the Japanese are spending for uh, welfare. The mm. total amount is 130 Japanese yen. That is as much as annual defense spending of the five countries of the United States, Russia, China, France, and Saudi Arabia, all combined. You know, that's mm. a huge amount of money. Right. And uh, it seems that uh, you are saying that COVID-19 and uh, the resultant uh, new way of uh, work, work from home, and the mm. great need of uh, healthcare and so on have been working or uh, have been hoped to work uh, to enhance Japanese uh, productivity. <clears throat> uh, may I just ask uh, 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 Genri Goto to tell us your view about how Japanese welfare spending, medical cost, the mountain of uh, uh, challenges therein could still uh, 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 push Japanese economy forward. Um, yeah, that's a very good question. And, and yeah, one, yeah, I think that the healthcare industry should change and the role of the doctor and role of the nurse and those kind role of the uh, 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 pharmacist um, very stable and yeah they uh, that that should be changed mm -hmm. and especially using uh, internet and digital transformation uh, they need to uh, move to the more uh, high productivity uh, yeah. functions yeah the the role of those those technician uh, technical people um, stable. Yeah, exactly. uh, it's a area for big data and AI. Yeah, the area we're talking about uh, involves a number of processes, both complex and uh, very much complicated. Uh, speaking of which, uh, uh, Ted, uh, what uh, should Japan do to take advantage of the growth of the uh, medical sector and use that to enhance Japanese productivity? Well, you look at um, Japan, one of the, the weaknesses, of course, is the, the demographics, the aging population. But mm. I always say that uh, weaknesses are strengths in disguise, right? And so, um, uh, and uh, uh, Shun was mentioning this too, is, is that uh, investments in the area, if we, if we spur the right type of investments, we could get some Japanese unicorns uh, because we have uh, that type of demographic, that type of needs. Um, mm. And so if, if we're able to get out there um, and, and this is the interesting thing if the right um, government, I mean, I know that there's a mm. lot of uh, anti uh, government uh, sentiment a bit, but, uh, but you know, I, I think of Japan as one of those places where government kind of did it right more than wrong. I mean, <laughs> it, 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 kind of, right? In, 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 you know, you can say a lot of things about many, but, but um, the, the, the post-war boom, 
a lot of it is credited towards those policies, right? So if if Japan and that's kind of the way that the comfortable uh, Japan is comfortable. So uh, I think this is one way we could move forward. Uh, yes. Oh, I I I would like to add on that. Uh, if you look into uh, Gini coefficient, uh, which is a, a typical indicator to see the income disparities, uh, Japan is one of the most equitable society in the world, especially among developed nations, which is a very uh, the, the most important strength that Japanese have. Uh, so Japan is known for providing quality services, quality products for midi- medium income people not only targeting the high-income people. And looking into India and China, the population of medium-income people is sure to grow very strongly, and there's many areas where Japanese companies can work together in harmony uh, with all these, 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 these gigantic nations. Uh, right. Uh, we have questions from the floor, one of which is about uh, Japanese external relationships and we have not talked about uh, the free trade agreements that the uh, mm. Japanese government is uh, forging, the most recent of which is RCEP. And some of you are very much uh, active in Asian markets other than Japan. So may I ask uh, any one of you to tell us anything about how RCEP and other external expansion of the free trade agreements could uh, work for the betterment of the Japanese economy. Anyone? Well, I, I just from our personal experience is that we found some very good growth in Asia, um, and because um, you know, we, it's the growth in Japan has taken a little bit more time because we're targeting enterprise and they they do take their time, uh, definitely right. But um, one of the things that's interesting is that um, I'll, I'll tell you this: there's a few things that we on the panel know, but then. Maybe not everyone here knows, but Japan actually is seen as the high tech leader, right? Now, and as the leading edge for Asia, many many people will say that, but we know internally that Japan could be quite uh, behind in terms of paper processes and the hanko and everything else, right? But Japan is seen as a brand as being in the lead. So let's take that brand, and you as you go overseas, especially in Asia, there's a widespread respect. Oh, you're a company from Japan. Is I feel like it's the same type of respect that we in Japan give to Silicon Valley, that Asian countries give to us in terms of uh, being a, a leader. So th- I think that's one thing. And free trade agreements definitely help uh, the leading edge companies um, go go there. I think Japan needs to do a little bit more outreaching because the market is just like in America. The market is so big that Japanese companies don't have to grow beyond Japan to get big enough. So um, so they should get out there earlier and, and do some business development. Shin, what's your take uh, like? I, I agree. And I think uh, I'd like to see the situation with RCEP and all the, the kind of regional uh, talks um, in a way that it's uh, on the one side, obviously there's China's um, one, one road, one belt. Uh, and obviously there's, there should be, uh, I don't want to steer too much, um, uh, a kind of a hot, hot debate, but there should be a counterbalance to the to mm. the Chinese approach uh, and uh, RCEP or the free open Indo-Pacific uh, alliance with the US, whatever it may be, I think for uh, all the countries within the region, there should be uh, multiple selections of how to uh, pursue economic prosperity or development. Uh, and uh, I think there's there's a room for, you know, uh, Japan to play in there. Mm. Hi, uh, I've just uh, given a uh, an okay to uh, one of the participants. You've got a microphone. Go ahead. You're on mute. <laughs> Gentlemen, you're on mute. I cannot hear. Go ahead. Microphone is yours. Gentlemen. You got to go off of mute. It's on the bottom left. There's a little recording button. I think he's already uh, out of mute, but uh, yeah, there's something wrong with well, probably the speaker. Can you speak? Maybe can you just say something? Uh, no. No. Uh, All right. Uh, Unfortunately, part, uh, part waiting. Uh, just uh, giving one comment yes. about RCEP. Sure. Uh, I I think R- RCEP is so important uh, because uh, it is the initiative where ASEAN is joining. So uh, everybody is talking about geopolitical China versus uh, U.S., but uh, it's really difficult to choose around among. 
and, and having multiple layers of the free trade agreement uh, is very important to have the stability and balance uh, uh, across various regions. Right. Uh, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, people joining. Ananda, uh, Sergio, Ivanio, you've got a microphone. Go ahead. Can, can you hear me? Yes, can I can. Me? Okay, can. good. Yeah, uh, I'm a, uh, so my name is Ivan from Ewin Group. We are a joint venture uh, with Japan, and we have been uh, bridging business between Indonesia and Japan for 11 years. So my question, which I already put in the chat, actually, is that uh, one of the struggles for us uh, to really help Japanese business to venture to developing markets like Indonesia is how we can actually speed up the process for them to make decisions because the opportunity, mm. opportunities are there, but it's not only Japanese company that is aiming for the opportunity. There are Korean companies, there are Chinese uh. companies, American <laughs> companies. So the question is, how can we solve this uh, problem of slow decision-making process? Uh, have any comments on that? Uh, because I really hope that Japan can really you know, improve uh, on this uh, uh, point of, of, of problem. Thank you very much. It's actually one of the age-old frequently asked questions. <laughs> any, any idea, please? Uh, well, uh, let me speak again. Well, I've been doing cross-border investment in the past 15 years, and we do have subsidiaries in Beijing, Hong Kong, and Bangkok. The key is don't send Japanese so-called chuzaiin. Okay. Use the local talent. Right, right, and right. We need Sorry, more what, what, is chu, what is chu zain? A chu, 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 <laughs> a chu is uh, 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 the person uh, sent from uh, Japanese headquarters. They right. change every three years. A salary man, right? Yeah, I salary man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, while uh, there are so many talented people in each country, and mm. and the system of international management has to be built up within the traditional Japanese companies. Uh, many of them are still uh, not really yeah uh, up to that. Right. Uh, use uh, local talent. Yeah, that's, exactly. Uh, that's almost self-evident. Any anything else? Uh, <laughs> yes, yes. Anything yes. else the Japanese companies could do to speed up uh, the process of decision making? Any idea? I think, I think it, uh, it also depends on your counterpart. So it's it's very easy to kind of bucket everyone uh, in in the slow ma uh, decision making <laughs> buckets. But for example, if you're dealing with uh, owner led companies, it might not even be uh, an SME. Mm. It might be a, a a pretty big company where still the the founding family would hold the decision making power. Um, the decision making uh, in those cases would be very much top down, not all of the cases, but in some cases. And similarly, if you look at um, in, uh, let's say, ministries, there there would be pockets where uh, power is concentrated. Uh, and so I think when you're negotiating, well, first of all, you have to find out who you want to negotiate with uh, and um, try to understand um, the, the, the person you're uh, actually negotiating with. Uh, and that's there's a Japanese term called nemawashi, and so mm -hmm. you know do your homework. Right. Uh, and so you know it's it's very easy to just uh, give up hope on the Japanese because of that. But uh, I I would like to ask that uh, you know there are um, you know different shades, uh, mm -hmm. and it's really important to find the uh, the relatively quicker decision makers. I, I would um, I, I agree with Shun completely, and I would add one other thing is uh, um, try to reduce the risk to zero if possible. Japan um, is very risk averse. They're not thinking about the upside. You know, they don't care. They don't care as much about the upside like in a country like the U.S. They're very much uh, worried about managing the downside. So if you say stuff like, "Oh yeah, if this doesn't work out, it's all on us. We'll do this. We'll do this. We'll do this. We'll do that." And um, that's one thing. And the second thing that Japanese in the risk averse category is that we grew a lot faster. We grew 11x last year because we got a few large Japanese corporates. As soon as we got the name of Mitsu Busan as one of our customers, then the big customers, they, they all started coming in, right? Until that, they would say, oh, oh, you have uh, such and such international company, ING or Randstad or, you know, all these companies. Oh, I, that, that's not a Japanese company. But everyone in the company is Japanese. <laughs> the CEO is Japanese. Everyone is Japanese. Oh, no, no, no. But that's not a Japanese company. So, so the thing is that, that if you want to uh, reduce the risk, too, is show a local presence, show that you have a lot of success stories, um, reduce risk every way you can. Wow. All right. Any further ideas? If not, uh, yes, go ahead. Uh, you, you've got a microphone. 
You're you still on mute. You got a microphone, but go on chat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Put something on the chat. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. I just want to say that uh, maybe while waiting for uh, uh, yep. Viva, Viva, I really resonate with uh, the answers of all the speakers uh, just now about the, uh, question, the question that I, that I ask because I'm also uh, considered as a local talent that developed by the, my investor from Japan. And I really feel... Uh, uh, an amazing experience, uh, uplifting, uh, uh, and I think they also considered me as half Japanese and half Indonesian, and mm -hmm. actually it's kind of uh, speeding up the process of the de uh, decision making, and uh, yes, uh, really valuable all for, uh, for, uh, all for the answers. Uh, it really resonates to my own experience. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh Talking about the difficulties uh, <laughs> to cut the uh, bureauc bureaucratic uh, institutions and of the Japanese companies, there may be a different aspect when it comes to startups. Uh, then, uh, using the final uh, five minutes, uh, can I just invite Mr. Goto to tell us, share, share with us your own experiences in launching startups in business? It's become, it's become easier uh, over the last uh, 10 uh, years or so. What would you say, Mr. Goto? Yeah, um, I I saw the um, startup scene for more than twenty five years, and the uh, um, startup scene is uh, quite different. Um, yeah, at that time we say we we didn't have uh, the word startup or venture venture uh, twenty five years ago. At that time, only the word was uh, that seller. That is uh, the ex ex exile the seller limit. and. Um, <laughs> And there were no venture capital 20 years ago, uh, very, very few venture capitals 20 years ago, and um, not talented uh, uh, startups at that time. But these days, uh, very talented people uh, come to startup, and the uh, scene is quite different, uh, and especially in these uh, five, 10 years. Okay, thank you very much. The question raised by uh, Mr. Upadhyay uh, is about uh, India-Japan relationships and mm -hmm. uh, especially what uh, he calls corridor of e economies. I think he means that uh, the Japanese and Indian governments are working to build uh, uh, Delhi-Mumbai industrial corridor, which is one of the big projects, I think, uh, in India. And also, he's probably talking about uh, Indo-Pacific Indo region. Uh, which was actually pushed originally by the Japanese government. It's uh, now taking shape as a quad, like Australia, Japan, India, and the United States. That's um, that got that's got very much a geo geopolitical connotation as well as geoeconomic connotation. But I think it's uh, going to take uh, another hour or so to discuss those issues. Time is running up. Two minutes, nineteen seconds. Any two finger interventions? Any one of you? Well, last week I happened to have the chance to meet uh, Mr. Suzuki uh, of Suzuki. Uh, he talked about many good things about India, starting his uh, auto business there. Yes. Okay. Right. Uh, we have to wrap up. Uh, in the first half of our session, we talked about uh, the difficulties for us to co uh, cope with COVID-19, and we started to see a silver lining, and uh, some of the changes seem to be happening and accelerating a little bit, although the difficulties of making decisions still uh, linger. And we talked a little bit also about RCEP and other Japanese uh, uh, external uh, foreign uh, trade agreements, uh, hopefully, they would work as a catalyst uh, to further the changes uh, in the Japanese economy. And uh, the productivity uh, is uh, the buzzword. Uh, without enhancing productivity, Japan could go nowhere. That much has been in consensus, broadly speaking. And one of the interventions from the, uh, from the audience was about uh, the slowness with which Japanese companies uh, make uh, decisions. Now, uh, one minute to go. Any final uh, thought? Any final intervention? I would uh, welcome uh, any one of those. Please. Final word. Probably from Ted. I said it before. Gaiatsu in process. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> okay. Right. Uh, more gaiats, more external pressures. <laughs> and nothing would be better than COVID in that sense, right? That's a good and, thing. It's an opportunity in disguise. Maybe okay. for me, it's uh, more working with the local people for better and productive uh, cooperation. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. 20 seconds to go, but um, <laughs> I'm not sure what, uh, what uh, more to say. Uh, gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you for very your much. time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, the session is now complete and closed. Bye bye. bye. A cocktail. Thank it was nice much. to meet uh, the other people on the on the, the, the speakers, the panelists. I'd like to get to meet meet you guys one day on uh, LinkedIn. So I, I I'm gonna chat with some people. Chat with you afterwards. Please do, please do. Look okay. forward to see you. Right. Okay. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.